Welcome to this week's episode of Brainstorm, where we give you a glimpse into the world of science for Wednesday, September 11th, 2013. Our top story comes from the world of medicine. Scientists from Harvard University working with colleagues in Sweden have developed a new method to induce cardiac regeneration. We've talked about repairing the heart after damage on Brainstorm before, but most of those stories involve the application of stem cells. And while stem cells are great, they're still very much in the development phase, with very few clinical trials and applications at the moment. What these scientists did was find a compound that would coax the native population of stem cells already in the heart into action. So they decided to use synthetic strands of messenger RNA, particularly a sequence that coded for a known growth factor related to heart development and growth. By injecting this mRNA into the cardiac muscle of mice, they were able to induce a short burst of production for this growth factor. This growth factor then seemed to steer the heart stem cells away from forming scar tissue after the heart attack and instead encouraged the growth of new vascular tissue in the heart. In their initial study, the treatment seemed effective up to 48 hours after the attack and showed long-term health benefits in the mice. Next is the application of this mRNA method to other animals before hopefully testing it out on humans. It'll be some time before this happens, but it is encouraging that a single type of mRNA molecule could have such a positive effect on a damaged heart. Next is news from the world of genetics, but it could also be considered neuroscience and medicine. Research from Washington University has identified a mechanism that promotes longevity in the brain. A particular focus in anti-aging research has been the CERT family of genes and their respective proteins. In this recent experiment involving CERT-1, the researchers showed that overexpression of this gene had similar results to that of dietary restriction. While it's possible that dietary restriction affects the expression of this protein in normal mice, inducing the overexpression artificially seems to confer the benefits of a low-calorie diet while allowing the mice to eat normally. Interestingly, CERT-1 only had this effect when the overexpression was specifically within the brain and not throughout the whole body. But the effects of the additional protein were seen throughout the whole body. Examination of older mice showed younger looking skeletal muscle tissue compared to the control mice. They also had increased nocturnal activity, better sleep patterns, and increased oxygen consumption. The researchers were even able to track this improved health to signals coming from two specific regions of the hypothalamus which may suggest an aging center within the brain. The researchers also pointed out that the effects of this modification did not slow the pace of aging, but simply delayed the average onset of age-related health conditions. Much more research is needed into the specific mechanisms that relates this protein, dietary restriction, the brain, and skeletal muscle. But it's interesting that a single modification in a specific part of the brain could have such far-reaching effects. We end with a quick update from the world of material science. Physicists from the University of Houston have created a new material with great potential for harvesting waste heat. It's based off of a material called telluride, which has long been shown to have great thermoelectric potential. The problem was that it often contained lead, which made it potentially toxic and hard to commercialize. Fortunately, this group had been able to develop a tin telluride mixture that lacks lead and was further enhanced by doping it with the element indium. In one experiment, this substance was used to capture the heat in a car's tailpipe and convert it to electricity to power electronics within the vehicle. Their initial results suggest that devices like this could increase the mileage of your car by up to 5%. With how much oil is burned and CO2 released in transportation, such an increase in efficiency could have significant beneficial effects. And they think that the recovery of energy could be even greater in power plants and other large applications. For example, boosting a coal power plant from 40% efficiency to 48% efficiency. Hopefully this material and others like it can be further developed and implemented soon. Well, hope you enjoyed this episode. Related to our second story, would you rather slow the pace of aging or delay age-related disease? Let us know your thoughts on that and all the stories in the comments.